So, who is Moises Caicedo, and should you be excited about the prospect of him joining Liverpool? Join me in this new LFC transfer room video. Hello, hello, Dan here. So today we decided to bring you something different, something new, and a little bit more simple. We're going to give you a short overview of Moises Caicedo, the Brighton midfielder, and what type of player he is. But before we jump into his position, what he offers, or what he lacks, we're going to talk a little bit about where he came from and why is he currently being so popular regarding the transfer news and the transfer world. You know all that so first things first we need to understand where did Moises Caicedo came from and I don't mean country-wise because he's obviously from Ecuador but I mean what team is the one that actually developed him and brought him up so for that there's only one answer and that's Independiente del Valle an Ecuadorian side that is memorably known for being one of the most important teams that brings up youth prospects in Ecuador. So uh, they are a very, very well managed side that just concentrate on bringing up young talent, selling them for a big profit uh, and so on. You know, just think about of the likes of maybe Benfica, think of the likes of Sporting and Ajax. They're basically the Benfica of Ecuador or South America, uh, may I say so. They've done this for many years, and they've done it so so well to the point that to the point that now and day, Independiente del Valle is established in the first division of Ecuador, and they're considered one of the strongest sites in the country. In fact, they're well known for being in the Copa Sudamericana and the and the Copa Libertadores, which is the equivalent of the Champions League in South America and Europa League in South America. Uh, in fact, they went to the finals at one point. So. They are a pretty strong side based on this mythology and, and, and formula they're following. So <clears throat> Moises Quesero is one of these prospects that they brought up. Uh, in other words, Moises Quesero had the best education possible in Ecuadorian football and in South America, per se, in this point in time, which is a huge thing for a player of that age. I mean, he's barely around the 20 years old, the, the, the 19-year-old mark. So, you know... Uh, there's still a player in there to explode. Anyways, um, one of the most important things that people do have to consider is the fact that Moises Caicedo was very, very close to making a move to Manchester United before he moved to Brighton. Um, there were talks on going for a few months uh, with Manchester United, but at the end of the day, some issues with the representatives and some issues with his work permits and whatnot made the move basically non-standing. And that's when uh, Brighton and Graham Potter came in and jumped at the opportunity of getting Moises Caicedo. So there was, this was a big gamble at the time because you're bringing in a player from the Ecuadorian League, um, which is known not to bring the best results, aside from maybe the likes of Antonio Valencia, who is obviously the former Manchester United captain who used to play for them many years ago. Um, but yeah, you know, Ecuador has never been one of those sides where teams will look at for bringing players, but now things have changed and that's why I'm going to switch topics and tell you a little bit about the Ecuadorian national team, uh, and the part that Moises Caicedo had to take, uh, take in, in order for them to be really successful nowadays. So the Ecuadorian national team is, are currently going to a, through a revamp where they're only playing youth. Um, prospects and only a couple experienced players so this is something that they haven't done in a while and um, in fact it was a major point of discussion at the beginning of um, their world uh, the world cup qualifiers because they're used to having their established and more experienced players but the gamble paid off and their manager after calling up most of young uh, of these young promises Um, they managed to make it into the World Cup. And yes, as you can see in the table in front of us, Brazil and Argentina qualified pretty early in their qualifiers. And Ecuador was actually in third place for most of the qualifying um, phases. 
at the end of the day, Uruguay just sneaked themselves in towards that end. Um, and I believe this table is, is, is um, not updated to the last game. But regardless, uh, in general, Ecuador was the third best team and is the third best team in South America at the moment, regardless of what the table says. And Moises Quesero had a huge part to take in this. So in the last year or two, uh, in fact, even three years, Moises Quesero has been an essential part of that starting 11 in Ecuador, starting every day in and out, whether they face Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, all these strong sides that have all these stars such as, you know, Messi, Casemiro, Neymar, um, Di Maria, Moises Quesero has faced all of these players and he's never given a performance below a 7 over 10, you know, so he's always very, very reliable. He's that bright spark out of the Ecuadorian national team. In fact, nowadays, he's one of the most promising stars in South America itself, and he's been known for being one of these stars for many years already. But nowadays, obviously, the media is giving him more spotlight because he's starting day in and out in Brighton, and he's getting men of the match performances left and right. But is this the type of player that Liverpool need? What are his strengths? What are his weaknesses? Like I said, this is not going to be a video that is going to go over metrics and the statistics or analytics. We're going to give you more of a, a general outlook of Moises Caicedo. So nowadays, is there a player that reminds you of Moises Caicedo? If you think about it, the closest thing to Moises Caicedo is probably N'Golo Kante from Chelsea. So they're very similar prospects. They're both really good defensively, but at the same time, they're able to break lines. They're strong. They're both very short. So that's what they have in common. They're both, none of them are defensive midfielders. I mean, maybe N'Golo Kante plays there from time to time, but Moises Quesero is more mostly known as a number uh, eight, as number eight. So one thing that there's a huge misconception around Quesero is that a lot of people may think that he's a defensive midfielder and some other people may think that he's uh, an offensive midfielder, like a number 10, but he's none of these two. He's just a regular number eight. It just happens to be that Caicedo has all these qualities perfectly mastered to the point that people start confusing in which position that he plays. So maybe a similar situation is the one that Liverpool went through with Naby Keita when the rumors started going on. I know if you guys remember, a lot of people thought that Naby Keita was a defensive midfielder or a number 10. And obviously after he came, people realized that he was number eight. So it's a very similar situation with Caicedo. He has all of these traits, but I believe that the strongest trait that he has is his vision. Moises Caicedo has an amazing vision and eye, both for goal and for passes. So he would be able to break the lines with passes. He would be able to run very quickly and shoot outside of the box with a rocket of a, of a foot that he has, um, as well as being able to find assists or maybe just open up spaces for uh, his teammates. So again, it's just an all-rounded player with all these traits perfectly mastered. Um, I guess you can say he has the mold to become the perfect midfielder for Liverpool or for whoever he plays for, right? So just to uh, kind of close down on the uh, on the situation regarding Moises Caicedo and Brighton. So at the moment, you guys know that Brighton Um, lost their manager uh, Graham Potter and uh, he went to Chelsea so now they're currently in a situation where they do not know who's going to be the replacement maybe at the time of, that you're watching this video they do find someone but uh, Brighton have been known for trusting South American prospects whether they're from Paraguay, Ecuador I mean the latest signing that they, they did was the Villarreal left back Pedavisa Stupignan who happens to be also from Ecuador Uh, Moises Quesero's teammate. As you can see in the picture, you have Purvis on the left side, Jeremy Sarmiento on the middle, who is one of the youth prospects as well, who's coming up in the ranks, and Moises Quesero next to the Ecuadorian manager. Um, this being so, so we do not, we are not sure what's going to happen with Brighton at the moment, uh, but this comes in favor for Liverpool. This should be the time for Liverpool to jump in and try to make a January move because this is the time that Moises Quesero is more unsettled. He doesn't have a tactical approach, a manager, someone to look up to, or any word on his future. Again, uh, Liverpool will most likely face 
competition from the likes of Chelsea or maybe other European sides. But uh, one thing that is for certain is that Moises Quesero will probably be valued around the mark of 50 million uh, pounds. Unlike the likes of Jude Bellingham of Nicolo, Nicolo Varela, who you guys know this pro are probably going to be valued around the 100 million mark, if not more. So if you guys think that Liverpool should look into a more affordable option, then at the end of the day, it's going to give you a very, very similar end product. I think Moises Caicedo is a perfect player in the making. Again, he hasn't played too many matches for Brighton, but he has for the national team of Ecuador, and he has proven to be always above the level of his teammates as well as the teams that he faces. So it's not like he's he's barely making his mark. He has been doing this for a few years now. And if there's a player out there that Liverpool should look for is Moises Caicedo to complement their midfield. Um, maybe Jude Bellingham, to, uh, Jude Bellingham could come in later to replace Thiago. Uh, Naby Keita could be uh, Caicedo's play, the, the player that moves out could be Naby Keita. Caicedo could come in for him, and maybe in the future you can have a midfield three of Fabinho, Caicedo, and Jude Bellingham. So it's up to see. We'll see what happens. But uh, that's basically a quick overview of what. Moises Caicedo brings and the type of player that he is. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Of course, please comment. What are your thoughts on Moises Caicedo? Do you guys think Liverpool should move in for him in January? Wait for the summer or maybe go for a different target? Let us know. And if you guys want a more of an analytical video, statistical video, we'll also bring that for you. Just make sure you comment down below. I've been Dan. I hope you enjoyed this video and up the reds.